thank you for coming and, and for coming at such short notice too. Uh, I thought it was important that I provide some advice as a result of um, a meeting that I've just come out of with uh, SA Health regarding the current situation with COVID as it relates to South Australia and the restrictions we have in place. I think it's fair to say that uh, SA Health uh, and South Australia Police are very concerned about the current situation that we're facing. Uh, and this arises from the situation in New South Wales and the, the significant number of positive cases that have been active within the community and also the emerging situation in Victoria with positive cases that have been identified there. Uh, we also have the situation where we have a, um, a positive exposure site at Tail and Bend and the situation with two removalists who have, have tested positive having been in South Australia and having been at that location for a, an extended period. There are some key messages that need to uh, be communicated. Firstly, with the Tail and Bend exposure site, the Shell service station and the attached cafe, there were 25 QR check-ins into that facility during the time of concern, yet there were 76 credit card transactions. This is a major factor in our considerations in, to, in relation to next steps for South Australian restrictions. We need to be confident that the South Australian community are doing the right thing and using those QR check-ins so we can actively contact trace anybody who may have been exposed. At this point, there are in the, in the order of about 118 close contacts that have been identified from the Tail and Bend exposure site. People must QR check-in if we are to have confidence in the QR data and rely on that to maintain the low level of restrictions we have in South Australia. We're also very concerned about the fact that there has been a positive case arising from the MCG last weekend and I would encourage any South Australian resident or person in South Australia now who was at the MCG at that football game to isolate and get a test and contact SA Health for further instructions. If you have been in Victoria over the last weekend I would encourage you to make use of the Victorian Health uh, internet site and assess whether or not you've been in any high risk location and seek further advice if you have. Some changes that are going to take place as of midnight tonight as a first step are that we are requiring all people coming in from Victoria to undertake level one testing. That means you must have a test within 24 hours of arriving in South Australia and you are not permitted to go to a high risk location, for example an aged care facility, until you have a negative result. That only requires one test at this time. We're also requiring all freight drivers who are arriving in South Australia to produce evidence of a negative COVID test that has been undertaken within the last 48 hours on arrival to the state. If you don't have a negative result, you'll be required to have a test within 24 hours of arriving in South Australia. These steps are being put in place as a first measure. I think it's fair to say that SA Health and SA Police are monitoring the situation as it relates to South Australia virtually on an hourly basis. So we will be meeting again tomorrow to talk about whether or not the, the evolving situation requires any further steps. This is a harsh warning to people of South Australia to make sure you do the right thing, QR code, obey the social distancing requirements, uh, adhere to the COVID safe plan requirements of hospitality uh, locations that you attend and get a test if you have symptoms. I, I need people to understand just how serious this is and how close we are to imposing further restrictions on the community of South Australia. We're not doing that now but it is something we are actively considering as we watch ha what happens in other places. Happy to take some questions. Um, for people who are in Victoria right now and they live in South Australia, what is your message to them? How concerning is what is happening in Melbourne at the moment? Well, I think uh, at this point in time, we're actively monitoring the situation in, in Victoria. Clearly the positive cases they have uh, gives rise for concern and I'm sure Victorian authorities are considering with their next steps. South Australian residents, uh, there is no barrier at this point in time in, in returning to South Australia and as I said you will simply be required to have a level one test which is testing within 24 hours of arrival. Uh, I can't forecast or predict what might change over the next 24, 48, 36 hours but people as I've said right from the beginning of this uh, pandemic if you do need to travel or you are interstate you must watch closely what's happening and be flexible with your arrangements. This is really quite unusual to hold a presser so late in the day at such short notice. Are you, I mean, are we being told off? And I would, I'm giving people uh, due warning that we are actively considering restrictions for South Australia. It's not something we want to do, but uh, given what we're facing in uh, Victoria and New South Wales, uh, we are 
making decisions that will be in the best interest of, interest of South Australia. At this point, there is no firm decision to put restrictions in place. This is a warning to people to support SA Health, do what we can as a community to make sure we are protecting ourselves and hopefully avoid those restrictions. So this is, this is, a, this is an alarm bell going off for people to understand just how serious the situation is uh, in, in, in adjoining jurisdictions. Has anyone been fined or is anyone facing fines because of the fact that only 25 people checked in using QR codes? Well, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a difficulty for us because we want those people to come forward, notwithstanding that they haven't QR coded in. Let's just get it right the first time. Let's QR code as we enter these premises where we're required to do it um, so we can help SA Health um, get on top of any potential outbreak. And we are dealing with a potential outbreak now in Tail and Bend. Um, for people who are in Melbourne, just again, would, uh, is it likely that we will bring that border shut down within the next couple of days? If they are over there, would you advise them to come back as soon as possible? Uh, not at this time. Uh, once again, closely monitor the, the situation, listen to the advice that's being provided. Uh, this is an early warning that we are concerned, but we have only put the very first step in place, which is just uh, to ensure the safety of the South Australian community, having people check, uh, check their, have a positive, sorry, have a test as they come in so we can be certain that they are not bringing the virus back with them and get on top of it quickly if they have. So at this stage, uh, I'd encourage people to just watch closely, but I wouldn't be changing plans right at this point. What about, what about the business itself? Is it facing any fines because of well, we've always worked with businesses um, and we understand that it can be difficult for uh, staff in these types of businesses to uh, compel people to do this. Uh, we're looking for reasonable efforts on the part of the business to make sure that QR codes are available and that you know, we're appropriate there checking people's compliance but we don't expect them to do our job as police or SA Health. So that's, that's an important message is you know, businesses generally are doing the right thing and we'd encourage them to keep doing that. I just need to qualify with the level one restrictions. That's only for Greater Melbourne in Victoria. So not all of Victoria, but Greater Melbourne. And just again, how many people were the credit card, used their credit card there? Was we had 25 QR code check-ins to the Shell service station and cafe, and 76 uh, credit card transactions have been identified through the investigations we've undertaken so far. We're continuing to investigate the exact movements of the removalists. Um, we're hopeful that we don't have any further exposure sites, but uh, we're just encouraging people to assist us in getting on top of this as quickly as possible and hopefully avoid further restrictions. But it is under active consideration. Earlier today, Emily said that um, you guys were going through CCTV to see which, if there was another exposure site, a third one. Mm -hmm. Have you had any luck with that? Is there any further updates? Uh, I don't have an update on that. The, the work is still being done. Uh, we're using um, other avenues as well to completely establish the full movement of the individuals concerned, the, the removalists. Um, but that work is still being undertaken by SA Police and SA Health. Do you think we'll have an answer on that by tomorrow? I'm hopeful we will. Uh, the sooner we have uh, con conclusive information about the exact movements of these individuals, then that will give us some confidence that we've identified any potential exposure sites. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for coming.